We've already mentioned that component S2 contains two symbols. Connections 10 and 9 are linked to a circuit containing a light-emitting diode, or LED. An LED is an electrical one-way valve allowing current to flow in one direction only, whilst at the same time giving off light. It's the small arrows that signify the component emits light. Click on the LED to see how it functions. Here are three other types of diodes used on our vehicles. They are blocking diode, Zener diode, and light sensitive diode. Click on each symbol to find out more. This symbol represents a blocking diode. A blocking diode is simply an electrical one-way valve. The arrowhead on the symbol shows the direction of permitted flow. This is the symbol for a Zener diode. It works like a blocking diode in that it acts as an electrical one-way valve. However, if the voltage in the blocking direction increases above a predetermined point, the diode will collapse to allow bidirectional flow. Once the voltage level falls below the set point, the diode reverts to blocking the reverse flow. This symbol represents a light-sensitive diode. It's similar to a Zener diode in that it acts as a one-way valve. However, with this type of component, current is allowed to flow in the reverse direction when light falls on the diode. As the light increases, the diode will allow the circuit's current flow to increase. Most diagrams include all the wiring and components that are fitted to a specific model. This usually includes optional circuits for market-specific equipment or both versions of a circuit when there's a choice of component or system. These optional circuits are recognizable by being within a dotted boundary box and by the bracket or coat hanger symbol. The bracket indicates that the cable continues in either one of the two optional circuits. The wavy line denotes the continuation of the cable. To find out what the optional circuits are for, you need first to note the designation of the components they supply. Next, refer to the legend. Generally, you'll find the optional circuits towards the end of the list or in the footnotes. Now here's a question for you. If you assume that the vehicle is fitted with a pneumatic system, irrespective of what it is, then what designation is the solenoid valve? Click on the correct answer. Yes, that's correct. In reality, you'd go to the vehicle to see which version was fitted and then refer to the appropriate part of the wiring diagram. The optional circuits just explained included two different types of solenoid valves. The symbol for a solenoid valve consists of two parts. This represents the electrical winding, or coil, and the other part of the symbol, the valve, is depicted by two inward-pointing arrows. This symbol denotes a restriction and is used in all Mercedes-Benz diagrams to represent a valve. This section of the generic diagram describes the horn circuit and the components used within it. Another commonly used component that incorporates an electrical coil is the relay. In this generic diagram, we've included one in the horn circuit. The symbol shows the winding and the contacts. The winding is depicted in exactly the same way as that in the solenoid valve. However, because a relay is a switch and not a valve, then the relay's contacts are shown next to the winding. The magnetic field that operates the contacts is represented by the broken line. The relay consists of two circuits. The energizing winding, known as the coil circuit, is connected to terminals 86 and 85. When the coil circuit is switched on, current passes through the winding and creates a magnetic field. 
This causes the contacts to close and the contact circuit between terminals 87 and 30 to be completed. These terminal numbers for the coil and contact circuits are common to most relays. There are many different types of relays fitted to our vehicles. Here are just a few of them. Click on each symbol in turn for an explanation. This relay incorporates a diode wired in parallel with the electrical coil and is generally there to protect against voltage surges. Some relays incorporate a resistor. It's wired in parallel with the coil and is generally there to protect against voltage surges. This relay has two separate sets of contacts and is capable of switching two separate circuits at the same time. This relay is capable of switching two circuits, although both are fed from one input. If you remember, the circuit you are currently following is the horns. The horn itself is represented by this trumpet-like symbol. The same symbol is used for a loudspeaker. In this section, you review what you've learned in the chapters 5 to 7. It guides you systematically through the outside air temperature display, switched solenoids, and horn circuits. You also have the possibility to explore some other parts of the diagram. The circuits will animate in stages for you to follow the route. We'll begin with the circuit of the outside air temperature display. The temperature sensor is supplied by the electronic control unit from pin 1 of connector plug 4. Current flows through the variable resistor and then returns to the control unit. Because the sensor's resistance changes according to air temperature, the current flowing in the circuit also varies. The electronic control unit detects the change to calculate the temperature, which is then converted by the display into a digital value. Now let's look at the solenoid valve circuit. Voltage for this circuit is initially supplied from terminal 15 of the ignition switch to connector sleeve J3. J3 supplies the switch S2. Closing the switch causes current to flow to the control unit and via the connector X3 to the optional circuits. Depending upon which of the two valves is installed, the current flows through the solenoid and to ground. As a result, the valve is activated. Now, here's a summary of the horn circuit. Circuits containing relays can best be divided into two separate circuits, the coil circuit and the contact circuit. We'll start with the coil circuit. Ignition voltage is supplied from connector sleeve J3 to terminal 86 of the relay. The other side of the relay's coil circuit is connected to the horn switch. Pressing the switch completes the circuit to ground. As a result, the relay's coil circuit is completed and the contacts close. Voltage for the contact circuit is supplied from connector sleeve J2, which is fed directly from the battery. The circuit is protected by a 15 amp fuse that feeds terminal 30 of the relay. With the contacts closed, current flows through the relay and down to the horn. Because the other side of the horn is connected to ground, current flows and the horn sounds. This virtual diagram is designed to let you explore freely the outside air temperature, switched solenoid and horn circuits, and the starter and generator circuits, enabling you to revise the circuits covered so far. You can navigate around the diagram as you like and click on any of the highlighted components to receive an explanation. The navigation tool will help you to move around. These optional circuits are recognizable by being within a dotted boundary box and by the bracket or coat hanger symbol. The bracket indicates that the cable continues in either one of the two optional circuits. The wavy line denotes the continuation of the cable. 
This is a mechanical relay. It shows the contacts which are joined to terminals 30 and 87 and the coil circuit connected to terminals 85 and 86. This is the symbol for a transistor which identifies an electronic control unit. In fact, this symbol is used to denote any component that incorporates semiconductor devices. Now I'll see if you can answer some questions relating to the subjects covered so far. Click on the symbol that denotes a temperature sensor. Yes, that's correct. Well done. Find an LED in the diagram and click on it. Yes, that's correct. Well done. Click on the symbol for a spring-loaded switch. Yes, that's correct. Well done. Find a mechanical relay on the diagram and click on it. Yes, that's correct. Well done. 